explain put call parity for European options. Put call parity is a relationship between the price of a call and the price of a put. In this section, we are going to discuss how we can relate the price of a call option to the price of a put option with replication using the price of the underlying asset and a risk free zero coupon bond. A protective put position is a combination of going long the underlying asset and buying a put option on the same asset. The value of the underlying at the end of the period will be ST and the value of the long put option as we have seen before will either be zero or K minus ST. If the price rises, the put option will expire worthless so the value of the portfolio will be ST minus zero. And if the price falls, the put option will have some positive payoff so the portfolio value then will be ST minus K minus ST, which is just K. Okay, so with the protective put, if the underlying price rises, the end of the period value will be ST. If it falls, the value will be K, the strike price. A fiduciary call position is a combination of going long a risk-free zero coupon bond and buying a call option, where the face value of the bond equals the strike price of the option. At maturity, the risk-free bond will pay out its face value, the amount K, and on that date, the expiry of the option will come with a payoff of either zero or ST minus K. If the price of the call options underlying rises, the call option will be exercised for a payoff of ST minus K, so the overall portfolio value in the event of a price rise is just ST. If the price of the underlying falls, the call option will expire worthless, and so the payoff of the fiduciary call portfolio in that case will be just K. Now you see what we've just done here. We have shown that a protective put and a fiduciary call two separate portfolios with two completely different components have exactly the same payoff structure. If the payoff structure of a protective put is equal to that of a fiduciary call, then we should be able to equate their costs. Remember a protective put is long asset plus long put option, so the cost is initial asset price plus put option premium. A fiduciary call is a long Z bond plus a long call option, so the cost will be the present value of the bond's face value, plus the option premium. This relationship equating all of these components is called put call parity. Explain put call forward parity for European options. Remember from the previous section that we can develop a relationship between the price of a call option and the price of a put option using the price of an underlying asset and a risk-free zero coupon bond. And we came up with put call parity. Also remember from earlier in the series, we found that if we combine an asset with a derivative, we can create a perfect hedge, the return of which should be no more or less than that of a risk-free zero coupon bond earning the risk-free rate giving us a relationship that looked like this. And we know that through the principle of replication, we can move the elements of this relationship around to find that a combination of forward plus risk-free bond should equate to the payoff structure of the underlying asset. The idea here is simple. We take the component assets that we use to build the put call parity relationship and we swap out the asset for a forward contract and a bond to yield the exact same portfolio value. Put call forward parity takes these two relationships and puts them together. Just rearrange the forward formula to isolate the spot price and swap it into the parity formula. Explain how the value of an option is determined using a one period binomial model. Okay, in this section, we're going to use a one period binomial model to determine the value of an option. Now we've seen these one period binomial models before. We have a starting point of S0, the underlying price at the time zero, and we have two possibilities for S1, the underlying price at the end of one period. Either we have S1 plus, meaning the price has gone up 
by the op factor amount, or S1 minus, meaning that the price has gone down by the down factor amount. Please take a special note of the reciprocal relationship between the up factor and the down factor. Now this is obviously a very simple model with a very limited practical use because we are required to know the only two possible routes the price can go. The price must be either S1 plus, which is above the strike price, or S1 minus, which is below the strike price. It can't go anywhere else. Okay, so we know that the value of a call option is either zero or S1 minus K depending on where S1 lands in relation to the strike price. If the price goes up, then the value of the call is S1 minus K. If the price goes down, then the call value will be zero. We're going to apply this principle to the valuation of a European call option. Remember that a European call can only be exercised on the expiry date. Now from earlier in the section, we know that we can create a perfectly hedged portfolio by combining a long position in an asset with a short derivative. In this case, a short call option. For each call option contract that we sell, we need to buy N shares for the perfect hedge. They won't be one to one. The cost of entering into this contract, denoted V sub zero, is given by N times the cost of a share minus the call premium we earn by going short. At the end of one period then, the hedged portfolio will be worth N times the stock price at the end of the period minus the amount that we owe to the call holder at the end of the period. As we have seen already, this can go one of two ways, either up or down, giving rise to two possible end of period portfolio values. But because this portfolio is a perfect hedge, we know that no matter what happens to the underlying price, the portfolio must produce the same return, the risk-free rate. Okay, I hope you are still with me. So far, we've spoken about the one period binomial model, and we've spoken about creating a perfectly hedged portfolio out of a long asset and a short call option. This has all led us to this collection of equations. We know the cost of the hedged portfolio, the two possible expressions for the end of period portfolio value based on the underlying, the two possible end of period call values, and the one single guaranteed end of period portfolio value based on the risk-free rate. With these, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to figure out the number of shares we need to create this perfect hedge portfolio. And second, we're going to come up with a formula for the value of the call. The algebra of this stuff isn't important. What you need to understand here is that through the process of building the hedged portfolio and considering the one period model, we have found these expressions and from here, we can derive these two relationships. One for the shares to create the risk-free hedged portfolio and one to price the call option. Replace the C's throughout this expression with P's and we get the equivalent relationship for a put option. Explain under which circumstances the value of European and American options differ. The major difference between American and European options is the freedom an American option holder has to exercise early. There is no requirement forcing an American option holder to exercise early, so American options because of this facility cannot be worth less than European options. Recall from earlier in this material that the expiration value of an option, European or American, is given by one of these two expressions depending on whether you are a call or a put option holder. For European options, we might discount the variables back to time zero to get an expression for the initial value of an option. This gives us an idea of the minimum amount anyone would be expected to pay to buy the option. When we think about American options, this is complicated by the fact that we have the ability to exercise early. As an example, here we have a call option. The price of the underlying stock is 20 euro, the strike is 19, the discount rate is 5%, and the time to expiry is one year. Under these conditions, the value of the option at this point in time would be given as 20 minus 19 over 1 plus 5%, or 1.9048. So if we wanted to sell this option in the market, this is a fair price. But what if this was an American option and we could choose to exercise today rather than selling it in the market? 
Now, if that was the case, the exercise value would be given simply as 20 minus 19, or 1.0. So here we can see that the early exercise value of an American call option is actually worth less than its market value. So with no extra information, the early exercise of an American call option is going to yield a lower return. If we look at a put option in a slightly different circumstance, the current spot price is 20, but this time the strike is 21. The options value here is given by 21 over 1 plus 5% minus 20, which is zero. But again, what if this was an American option and we could choose to exercise early? Now the exercise value is given simply as 21 minus 20 for a value of 1.0, indicating that the early exercise value of an American put option is actually greater than its market value. So for American options, we end up with these expressions for the minimum value. This is the first major point I want you to take away from this LOS. American and European options will have exactly the same value at expiration. American call options will often, but not always, have an early exercise value of less than its market value, and American put options can benefit from the early exercise. So now we have talked about minimum values of European and American options, and we have shown that at times, the early exercise feature of an American option is actually of no value. Here we are going to finally get into the LOS and talk about the scenarios which cause the early exercise feature to have positive value, pulling apart the values of European and American style options. Stocks pay dividends, bonds pay interest, and some assets have carrying costs. That's the key. Dividends and interest will encourage the early exercise of a call option, while carrying costs encourage the early exercise of a put option. When a stock pays a dividend, its price falls simultaneously. With an American call option, we can exercise right before the dividend, buy at the contract price and sell at the market price before the market price drop eats into our profits. This idea is very similar for bond interest payments. If we held a put option here, it would not be worthwhile to exercise early. It would be more valuable to wait until after the dividend is paid to capture the price drop in the payoff of the put. When there are holding costs associated with an asset, there is a simultaneous rise in price corresponding to the cost date. For a call option, the most value comes from waiting until after the cost date. That way, we avoid having to pay the cost on a new asset holding and we benefit from the price rise in terms of the call option payoff. With a put option on the other hand, being able to exercise early will add to the options value because we can sell before the impending price rise eats into profit potential.